Hello everyone, this is the duck in Japan and today I'd like to make a confession, a little confession. I'm a pack rat. This is my life behind the camera. Uh, growing up, there was a room in our house that we called the little room, affectionately. And it was very much like this room. It was piled high with all kinds of boxes with things that had value. Um, so I think my pack rat nature is genetic. But my mother has given me much hope in that when I return to where I grew up, the little room is uh, a ghost of what it used to be. Uh, it's very uh, usable these days. So recently, Marie Kondo, Marie Kondo has been receiving a lot of attention with her Kon Marie method of tidying. And uh, that was very inspiring to me. Um, she has a, a notion of picking up objects one by one and thinking about whether they inspire joy. And if something inspires joy, you keep it. And if something doesn't, you discard it. Uh, that's an interesting idea. And I've actually used that idea to um, go through the papers that are in these many, many file boxes. Uh, you can imagine that after over 25 years of consulting for dozens of clients, I've accumulated lots of papers. So I took each file folder out of these boxes and I looked at the company name and I asked myself if that company sparked still that situation, that interaction still sparked joy. And I kept the file folder and sometimes I went through it and I picked through individual papers and I did that. So even though Marie Kondo suggests that you start with things like clothing, which I haven't started on yet, um, in my life, papers were a more important thing. And you can see that I still have a lot left, but this is probably one third of what I was sitting on before. So I'm happy with the progress that I've made. And I think I'm over halfway done with my current tidying project. Uh, this room, and there may be a couple more rooms in this house that I want to tackle, and clothing. I hope to do the Marie Kondo thing of putting out all the clothing neatly folded on the floor and uh, deciding on a uh, basis of picking up each piece of clothing whether it's going to stay or not, ultimately. But at this point, I have a working kitchen and a working living room and an office again. So that's quite some progress. My concerns with Marie Kondo, I guess my primary concern is the environmental consequences of if we all threw away all this junk that we're sitting on or, you know, in my case, it's junk that somehow has a value to me that I'm not ready to quite discard yet. And I, I'm worried about the single-use mentality right now in places like Europe and the U.S. and not quite Japan yet. Uh, single-use plastic straws are receiving a lot of attention, negative attention. But there are lots of other single-use things in our lives. Um, not just plastic. For example, these are frothing pitchers that I bought in the 1990s in California when I made cappuccino type drinks, which I don't make anymore. And they sat in this room for over 10 years, not being used. And I found them recently again and they're not anything 
sophisticated these days, there are now incredible frothing pitchers available. But you know, somebody put a lot of energy into making these. They're pretty high quality stainless steel. And uh, maybe you know from some of my other videos, I'm quite a fan of the AeroPress lately. And I was at a Specialty Coffee Association event in uh, Rhode Island a couple years ago. And they kindly gifted me this uh, uh, AeroPress during a demonstration that was left over. And the other thing that they gifted me with was the notion that an AeroPress plunges onto a frothing pitcher perfectly. In fact, as Brian of Brian Coffee Spot has taught me, even a small frothing pitcher can be used to plunge an AeroPress on. So these are wonderfully versatile devices. And if I had given up on their single use, which no longer was useful for me, um, or thrown them away so that they could be refashioned into something else. That just seems very wasteful to me. Uh, and, and these days, um, we go to the dollar store in Japan and we see things that we bought for 10 or 20 times the price 10 or 20 years ago. And maybe they're not of the quality and precision of the items that we bought. At back in that day. Um, so it's, it's a frustrating time because ultimately you take this to a YM, you know, some kind of a donation facility and they don't want it. So it's basically trash at this point. Uh, so I'm kind of worried about the implications of Marie Kondo if we all just use something for its intended use and then throw it away. And as somebody who's interested in the maker community, which is all about um, finding new uses for things that are lying around, um, I think there's something else that needs to be expressed in this whole notion of tidying. So that's what I have to say about tidying for today. And I would like to thank Jane and Akiko and Claudia and Setsuko for this for their help on this journey of uh, coming to terms with my pack rat nature and uh, learning to tidy. Thank you for watching and I hope that you'll comment and uh, about your experiences with tidying and messes in your life and how you deal with that and what your ideas about how we deal with the kind of environmental issues that we're facing today when we're sitting on so much junk or stuff. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you again soon.